slicer. Um, that's not really covered by this stuff. So. Yes? Is the STL uh, human readable? There's actually two formats of STL. There's binary STL, which is obviously not, and there's text STL, which is a weird text-based description of different facets and things. And it is human readable, but like it's not meant to be readable by humans. I mean, so it's text. Words, you can read it. It's just you're going to have a hard time making sense of it. So in other words, it's human readable if you have a doctorate in 3D modeling. Not even that. <laughs> well, doesn't the slicer program just produce G code? Yeah, the slicer program generates G code. The G code would be the output for it, which is yes. kind of readable if you understand like just machine language. Yes, um, I actually found here a text version of STL. So it looks like that, which this in particular is the 9 volt battery case. Mm. So it creates a facet, and it's really just this a whole bunch of times. You know, create a facet, create a facet, create a facet, create a facet, stuff like that. But you should never, ever really have to ever deal with this, ever. If you do, then you're writing a slicer program or something done terribly, terribly wrong. And when you say fast, do you mean it's layer? Uh, no, well, STL defines a volumetric description of a shape, not the layers. It just says, like, for example, this bottom piece, that's one facet. This whole layer, it just says, here are the coordinates for it, and it's a facet. Okay. And the normal is on the outside. Same thing for this over here, where it probably has, like, this is a big rectangle, and it's got these two smaller rectangles next to the little clips, and then a bigger rectangle at the bottom. It's like, stuff like that. So is a, is a facet rectilinear, rectilinear, it's a flat? Yes, it is a fat, flat surface, usually a triangle. There's some extensions to it. I, I really don't know much about the STL format, other than it's the standard for 3D printing. Because it's just an intermediate format to me, I don't really deal with it. I make a model, put it STL, and then you G-code. And then I only wear all of the other two. Any other questions? Yeah, what's up? What, what if I wanted to draw, say, a heart? <clears throat> there is a method in uh, uh, OpenSCAD. I was looking for the file here. Yeah. Where you can create a, what's known as a DXF file. It's some AutoCAD format, but a lot of programs can also handle it, like Inkscape. So if you want to draw a two-dimensional image in Inkscape with vector graphics, you can save it as an STL, or a, sorry, a DXF. And then you can import it through the OpenSCAD program with an open import command. And this yeah. is a QR panel. So it looks like that. And what I did is I rendered this QR code with the QR program to a PNG file imported that into Inkscape, and then traced it, converted it into SVG, and then exported that into DXF, which was this other file on my system. And I import it, I linear extrude it, three height, I move it uh, two units up, so it sits on top of this other cube, which I have covering like the base of it. So this is actually two pieces. I've got this extruded QR code sitting on top of a completely flat place, base, sorry, because oh. without it, Hmm. Uh, okay. Cool. There's nothing under it. Right. Huh. You can do like two circles and a triangle and just move them around and make it look like a heart. You could. Um, yeah, you could with triangle. I was trying to think you could use a rectangle for that. Although actually you could use a square. Yeah, a square would work too. Yeah, just have a square and two circles. The other part where they join. Yeah. So, OpenSCAD is really like more of a tool, you got to think of it like that. Like, how can I use these components I have to make something really cool? Like, a heart. You know, you draw a square, and then you get circles on the outside. Other questions? What's the uh, possibilities of importing other code? Like, you said you got that PNG file in Inkscape. What's um, the likelihood of getting like a proprietary CAD program over? OpenSCAD can handle DXF, STL, and other SCAD files. I think that's all it can do. Okay. That's I all assume, I've ever been able to get work with. I assume there's other platforms that I'm sure you can find a way to export on them. Yeah, DXF and STL are standard formats, so if any other program can export those, then you can import it into OpenSCAD. Gotcha. So like if you use AutoCAD or Google SketchUp, you can export an STL and then import it in this and add more modifications to it. And I found some programs that take like OBJ files from like the video games 
and you can change the OBJ into like an STL. So from there, you can probably go backwards and get it back into OpenSCAD. Gotcha. And another question is, uh, what's the main differences between like this OpenSCAD program and let's say just a, a generic AutoCAD or uh, some program? I mean, Good is question. there a lot less, less features or? Well, um, I wouldn't say there's a lot less features because this is a programming language. It's Turing complete. You can do literally anything if you want to spend the time to do it. If you want a nice point and click interface, use OpenSCAD or something like that. If you want really quick, simple mathematical objects, like a bunch of boxes that cut holes in each other, use OpenSCAD. Then you can just quickly say, I've got this shape, which is this big, and I want you to cut out some holes in these positions that are this big. Like, <coughs> sim super simple stuff. You can do complicated things, but you have to ask yourself, is it really worth it? So it's basically if you're dealing with a web browser, you could use Windows or Linux to get that part of just what the preference is and how you like it. Work. Yeah, it's how much you want to work for it. It's, yeah. it's like a programming language, really. What programming language you want to write something in. If you want to use AutoCAD to make something that looks professional or fancy or artsy, go for it. If you want to use OpenSCAD to do the same thing, well, I'll see you in a few years when you're done. <laughs> Other questions? All right, cool. If uh, you guys want to look at some of these parts, they're up here. Most of the pieces and stuff that are just floating around in blue pieces that look like nothing at all, they're probably something I wrote in OpenSCAD. Um, just go ahead and ask me questions about it. And the printer is running right now, I think. Maybe we're reprinting another clip. I can start another one now. I can get something started, though. Yeah, sure, why not? Make another right. clip. Um, so that's the review of OpenSCAD. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I did have a question. It's, it's the slicer then that determines uh, how efficient the printing process is? Yes, the slicer program reads in the STL, which is, again, just a definition of a bunch of faces. And then it looks at that and it generates, slices it into different layers, slicer, and produces the tool paths to get around and make the fills and make all that work and then move up a layer, make those movements. Because the 3D printers are essentially uh, CNC machines, they're just in G code, which is a bunch of lines that start with G because they're G code. It's a weird language from like the 70s. It is an ANSI standard, so of course it's unintelligible gibberish. Pretty good. Oh, go ahead. You're first. Uh, oh, um, would you say there are any sort of obvious to you inherent limitations that are a good idea to keep in mind? Well, you have to write all your code. I mean, that's one. So if you're not a programmer, it's not the easiest thing. You can certainly get yourself navigate around. Also, like I said, these numbers on here, those are just like numbers. I found that worked. There is no real super easy way to say like draw me a banana, and then three bananas over, make another banana, or something like that. You have to say, all right, I have to look in the code, figure out the width of the banana, move it over, buy a banana, and stuff like that. And what was your question? Oh, I, I used to or, program. In front of you, sorry. Or did you also have oh. a question? No. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, what was my question? Oh, well, this is a little bit off topic. But I'm, but I'm wondering about the, uh, I, I do know that there's an issue about uh, like trying to span a gap, you know, on your... On bridging? Your yeah, bridging. Okay, that would be described a lot. Um, well, that's something you have to consider in your designs, which OpenSCAD doesn't really handle, so it kind of is off topic, but that's something you do have to think about when you're making your designs with 3D printers, because what he's talking about is, um, you will see how the pieces around that look like that. Oh, that came unplugged. Um, so bridging is when you've got your 3D printer and it extrudes a little bit of filament, which you can't just print in the middle of air. It can't just, it's got to be on something. Bridging is when you build a bridge using filament, where you've got like something on one end, something on the other, and the print head just quickly drags a filament across and it solidifies in air, and because it's going in a straight line, it works. Slicer can handle some of that stuff. Um, for things that don't do that, you can do what's called support material, which is like an octagon pattern that builds up underneath it and easily breaks off when it's done. I was, I was wondering if there's anything incorporated in these, well, it probably wouldn't be at, at this level, but, no, not to, this level. But, to, but to be able to reposition the thing, like to turn it on its side. Um, you can apply rotation, rotation to it. Well, I mean, it, while it's printing. So it's, it's, it stops the printing and says, okay, you're gonna, we're, we've got a bridge here, so Let's turn it on the side while I do this work. Can we turn the whole printer? Uh, yeah. Like um, that, 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 if anything, that would be a function of the slicer program. 
also really awesome. I'm gonna make that. Yeah. So in the case of this design here, where you've got the cube sticking up in the middle of another box, mm -hmm. was there a bridge thing that happened there, or did it? No, this is. Um, see, it's got this. Let me highlight that. So there's two pieces here. You can see that the QR code is actually embedded in a little bit. And I've got just a big, giant, flat cube shape, which isn't really a cube, but we'll call it a cube. So it's this all this bottom part here is going to be plastic. And on top of it, it's just printing raised bumps of plastic, which are sitting on top of things. There's, like, there's no bridging involved in this. But if you turn that thing upside down, then you'd have Yeah, if you turn it on its side, then it would look terrible. <laughs> yes, Alex. Another question is, uh, what type of uh, scan drawing site that you go to to get prior drawings or something that you, can, you don't want to reinvent the wheel? Think of it generally. Okay. Also, you can Google. Um, I thought we had some other pieces over there. Um, there's like, uh, if you want to make uh, screw threads or something, there's a library that you can use in OpenSCAD, and all this is documented out there too about how to use it in your code. Because this is really meant for newbies and stuff. And there's like a thread library where you can define here's a thread, it's got this many turns, here's all these other parameters, and it would render a thread and you could print it. And it works out good. Yeah, we've got like a webcam out next door or something. Is it a way to download your your programming onto the open scan to us, you know, like a database where you know you can somebody can look up and like you said, the design is already there, you can just copy and use them. Thing works. There's a website, Thingiverse. If people upload these SCAD files to it, you can download that. Oh, okay. But if you want to interface programmatically with this, there is a command line version of it. So you don't have to have this whole interface, this GUI and the rendering and stuff, and you just tell it, read in the SCAD file, export to STL in this format. So in that sense, there is a bit of a way you can interface with the database, but this itself doesn't have database connectivity. You have to write some other tool that builds on that. This is, it's like a Unix philosophy. This does one thing, it does it really well. Although that's to be able to. Cool. Is this is this the only open source tool oh, that no, does this? No. Oh, there's a lot there's of there's a other bunch of others, but okay. this is the easiest for really quick stuff. Okay. Because I'm not one to point and click on Google yeah. SketchUp or something and yeah. build like that clip. Because I don't really know how to make that in Google SketchUp, but this took me like 15 minutes to put together. Right. The code. <clears throat> this one. Oh. Cool. So, no other questions? All right. Sweet. Thanks. Yep. And like I said earlier, December 5th, we're having a class on here at Synhack, part of the Speakers Bureau of uh, Shop Safety. So, if you want to go in there and use the saws and stuff and learn exactly how not to lose fingers, then come to that, and we'll get you certified, hooked up and everything. And then, uh, by then, we'll have a class scheduled for the, um, the two weeks after that. Second week of January. Is it the second week? No. Oh, sorry, December 4th is that class. December 18th is the one we're trying to schedule right now. Gotcha. Okay. Which I think is going to be Medical First Aid with Omar. Gotcha. Also, fun. if anybody has any topics that they're passionate about and would like to teach, um, get in touch with either Tori or I. We're always oh, looking for people to present for Speakers Bureau. Module. Um, module. You know, it doesn't really matter what the topic no. is. If you want to teach it, we'll provide a forum for you, and we'll get you an audience. So, if you want to, you know, if you want to teach something about Legos or starting a business or you know polymer science or whatever, let us know. We'll we'll give you the space and the time and the audience and everything. And let you teach a class. Yep. So uh, let's get a hand for Tori for the class.